Aloha Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kowani Foundation. I'm Ehu Ke Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today in beautiful Palolo Valley. We got a great guest to share with you, so let's go on over and meet her. Joanna, welcome, aloha. Aloha. Thanks for being on the show. Show, Joanna Kamaunu, I said your name right, didn't I? Yes. Wonderful, and you're from the island of Maui. Hi. What part of Maui are you from? Waihe'e. Waihe'e. On the it's, North Shore. That's a beautiful part up there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And so you've been involved in some activities there on Maui, yes? Yes. And tell us about that. What what, what are you doing over there? Well, um, we have a case, and when I say we, Nawai'e Ha'ohana is um, contesting the right of the Wailuku Sugar Plantation. So you got a legal case going? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. okay, good. And the issue is water. They have been planting cane for most of Maui for years. And when they stopped cane, their usage of water increased. Really? So it begs the question, where's the water going? Because that's strange, you'd think it would be decreasing. Correct, but it's but not. It increased. So that means the water's going somewhere that exactly. people don't know about. That's right. So have you found out where the water's going? We actually have footage and documentation. Um, a group called Maui Tomorrow mm -hmm. found water being dumped into Kaleo Pond. It's on uh, the south side of Maui. Why are they dumping it over there? Well, it's a wetland area. Uh -huh. So it was very easy to hide that kind of water. Ah, okay. So they're actually actually stealing the water, if you will, and taking it over there and storing it. Why were they taking it and storing it there? What were they going to use it for eventually? Nobody said that they're even doing that. Uh -huh. But it's our assumption that since they don't have planting, that they're hoping to become some kind of water management company gotcha. for the county. And they have actually created a company called the Water or actually the Wailuku Water Company. Really? It's run by Avery Chumbly. Wow. And they are hoping to sell water to the county. Wow. So we're trying to understand how waters from our rivers and streams can be taken on by a private entity mm -hmm. and then sold to the county for public use. Mm. Especially since we have world patents to most of those lands that um, are the source of the water. And those world patents carry mineral rights with them. Of course. And so, people do not know that they have these mineral rights in those royal patents. So this is kind of like if I stole your car and then tried to sell it to somebody else, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And of course, you don't want me to do that. You want me to give you your car back because it's your car. That's right. I should be able to take it where I want to go. That's right. That's right. Good. So how many of you are involved in doing this? Well, I have to say I wasn't the impetus on it. It began with a, a family up in Iao Valley, Navai right. Eha are the four valleys of Maui, right. Waikapu, Iao, uh -huh. Waihe'e, and Waihu. So how did you get involved? What made you get involved? Well, I found out, I actually was doing um, a land search title on how our family came to acquire our property in Waihe'e. And in doing so, I found that we had a piece of property at the top of the watershed uh -huh. that no one in the family knew that they had or have access to. In doing that, we also realized that our waters weren't coming to our property because we have lois, mm -hmm. and it wasn't coming as it used to. Mm -hmm. um, further search showed that the river near our home was decreasing in amount. Wow. So that at, let's say 10 years ago, when we went into the valley, into the river, it might have been chest high. Today, you go into the river at the same spot, it's ankle high. Really? And that's in the last 10, 15 years. So how do we reduce the water? How did that happen? And still not be planting. So that's what made you get involved is, is noticing that this is happening. And you said, I cannot sit back and not do anything. That's right. Wow, good for you. Thank you. <laughs> good for you. So how long ago was that you started to get involved in this? Um, This has been nearly two years. Really? Really? Must be an interesting journey, huh? 
it's been life changing. How so? Um, in doing the search on the title of the land and finding out how that property came into our family, we found out how we were related to other people in the valley. Mm. And we began to see um, this interconnectedness between a lot of people in the valley. So we had to answer the, ask the question, how come we don't know that today? Mm. But so, this is starting to unite us. So this is like a big jigsaw puzzle that exactly. all the pieces begin, to, you begin to put them together. Yes. And you saw the larger picture and you went, oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. So this whole thing has started to really connect all of you in a way that you all were not connected before, huh? And not just with the people today that we weren't familiar, we knew them, we didn't understand the relationship, but it's also helped us to connect to the past. Mm -hmm. It's been seven generations since um, Pi'i Mai Va'a was awarded a royal patent for the lands that we enjoy today. Is that right? Seven generations? And I don't know if you re realize this, but that's significant for Hawaiians. The number it, seven. Yes, yes, it gives us a chance to look back yes. to see what we had and where we came from. And it also gives a responsibility to this generation to look for its seven generations. Mm -hmm. And that's what's propelling us today. Mm. To know that you're right smack dab in the middle of seven generations past and seven generations to come. Yes. So that's like a message to you that we can't sit still and not do anything. We have to get involved. Here. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, very good. So Joanna, you were, you were mentioning about the royal patents and that you have, your family have, has those, yeah? Yes. Explain to our viewers what royal patents are, because I know some people know what they are and then some other people have no idea what the royal patents are. Well, um, when Koiki Uli Kamehameha III. One of the royals. Yes. Yeah? When he became when he came into power, he recognized that there was a need to help the Hawaiians retain the lands that they had. I believe he was well aware of the power of foreign entities. Uh -huh. And in doing that, he um, first organized a commission and the commission went about trying to verify the land that people held. Uh -huh. This commission in turn would recommend to the king the people and the lands that they had and what was correct. The king in turn would provide a legal patent. Um, they call it quieting title uh -huh. to the land. Uh -huh. And this is how people came to acquire the land individually. Uh -huh. So this was at a time in Hawaii when there were a lot of foreigners coming in and the king was looking at a way, how can we ensure that these resources in this land stay with our people instead of being stolen by foreigners, yes? Yes. And so the answer was to grant royal patents. Yes. For the for the ali'i, the royalty, to say, I bequeath to you, like a will, like if, if you or I die and we leave to our heirs something, bequeath to your family this land, these resources, things like that, to ensure that it actually goes to you. That's correct. Yeah, good. Uh, but a little bit different. Okay, how? The king still retained title, uh -huh. if that can be understood. He allowed us the right to live and to do what we needed to, to sell and use the things that were on that land. Uh -huh. um, and because he still retained title, uh, even if one of us, our line should end, it's my understanding that the land would revert back to the king. Of course, but that, there he built in the safety factor that he, he still retains it so that if all of you should pass away, then it still doesn't go to foreigners, but it goes correct. back to the king. That's correct. Yes, so it stays with the Kanaka Mao. Yes. Yes, yeah, and that, <clears throat> that really is the Pono way because it comes full circle, yes? Yes. Yeah, good. Good. Hawaii is, is uh, the only place you know, we talk about the United States, and of course, Hawaii is not the 50th state. <laughs> but the other 49 states, there are no royal patents. Hawaii is unique in that regard, yes? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. From my understanding is that um, to allow interstate travel, uh -huh. U.S. land patents were issued. Uh -huh. And that was not available to Hawaii. Yeah. So, in a way, 
we're really not part of the United States. Right. And the royal patents, even to this day, to this moment, have never been extinguished. Correct? That's correct. They're still li alive and active. That's correct. Yeah. And it's interesting that on January 29th or 31st, I believe um, Justice Moon made a decision on ceded lands, crown yes. lands. Yes. Um, yes. And what that's, did he say? Well, pretty much that um, Hawaiians have some rights here to these lands. Mm -hmm. And first of all, the state cannot sell or um, it, trade any of those lands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because they belong to Hawaiians. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So the how when you discovered that your family, through your research, still had these patents, what effect did that have upon you? It kind of made the past seem not so far away. Oh. It made the past very close, and oftentimes. You wonder what they were thinking of back then. These are people I know my husband and I would have liked to know. We'd like to have known what they thought. And to realize that what we enjoy today is a result of their work. Mm. I notice this is very emotional for you, yes? It is. It, um, you have to understand, I guess, growing up in Hawaii, um, in my time of life, I grew up believing I was American mm -hmm. and not understanding my culture as well as I, I should have. And in the last 10, 15 years, I've come to understand more about the culture and who I am. So this is just one more link that connects me to who I really am, to my ancestors, to our past, and to this land. So that what we try to do for our family is not a kind of work, but more love. A labor of love, yes. Yes, yeah. definitely. You can't do this kind of stuff to go to court, to sit for hours at meeting, and expect to get some kind of monetary recompense. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. For us, it's just knowing that this was given to us, and it was given to us for a very specific reason so that I could continue on providing, producing for our families. And we'd like to continue that. Yeah. You know, the, it must have been, um, discovering the royal patents, it must have been like your ancestors actually speaking from the past directly to you, yeah? Well, it's as if they led us to it. Yeah. You know, this has always been there. Why didn't we know about it sooner? Yeah. And now that we've come upon it, what do we do with it? Uh -huh. Things can never be the same now. Yeah, knowledge is power, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it most certainly is. Yeah. And in regards to um, Justice Moon's decision, I got to put that to a test. I um, was able to testify at council, at our county council meeting regarding that. Mm -hmm. When I was asked by a council member as to what mechanism the council could use to deal with the issue of land title. And I suggested that the OHA case would be one to look at Justice Moon's um, opinion because he explores that to the point where he says you cannot sell, you cannot trade, this belongs to the Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. So by that same token, I said, even if you didn't have the chance to validate whether this information is true today, I've already told you, can you truly divorce yourself of that responsibility? Mm -hmm. You know, even though you haven't been able to verify that. Mm -hmm. Someday when you research it, that's your responsibility now. It's your turn. You go find out if this is right or if this is not. But to say you have no liability in decisions you make regarding our land and rezoning, then that's not right. Yes, yeah, very good. I started all of this because I wanted to know what was going on in my backyard. Uh -huh. And that meant I needed to know how we came by this land because up until, oh, I guess a couple years ago, um, I'd never seen a deed. So that started me on the title search for the land, which led me to the royal patent. 
which led me to um, finding that my husband's mother had other properties in the area and they were under other royal patentees. So to track down how she acquired that land also helped me connect with family today. And I remember running by um, an aunt and saying, who's this person? She gave this land to um, Connie's mother. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, that's an auntie, one of the tutus. But up until then, we never heard of that person. Wow. Yeah, so that wow. was one thing. Now, before I even got started on that, I um, taught Hawaiian studies. And I say taught because I no longer do that in the Kupuna program in the DOE. And I guess at one point, after 14 years, I started to question what I was doing. Uh -huh. Not enough substance to what we were presenting in the classroom. Uh -huh. And um, a class at Manoa called Malama Ika Aina mm -hmm. um, started to show me how science understood what the Hawaiians did. Mm -hmm. So I looked at, we looked at the lo'i and we looked at why it was important for fresh water to be coming through the lo'is. and the Yes. Uh -huh. And we found that temperature was important. We found that moving water was important. Mm -hmm. And through science, I realized knowledge of our ancestors. It should have come to me through my kupuna, and not all of it did. Mm. A lot of it didn't. Mm. But through science, I understood how they did things. Mm. And then I understood what a remarkable thing for them to have learned. Yes. And then to have found out other things about them was just... Um, too much to let go. What an, adva what an advanced culture and society, yes? Yes. Yes. And so um, I decided to go back to college. Wow. And um, two years later, I got my associate's degree. Mm -hmm. And it was this search for knowledge that kind of changed my whole life around. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm trying to say here is that, oh, I know what it is. I had a language teacher, mm -hmm. and I've had several, but she was the last one I had. And she taught me something unique from all the other kupun, from all the other kumus. Mm -hmm. And what she taught me was that you need to take responsibility for your learning. Uh -huh. And she says, when you walk out of this classroom, learning doesn't stop. That's right. And I says, oh, but I always do that when I leave campus. <laughs> 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 well, she says, when you're walking down the hallways. You can be thinking of how you can say something in Hawaiian. Yeah. When you're brushing your teeth in the morning, you can think about how you can say that in Hawaiian. When you're driving down the road and see two people in the car arguing, you can think about how to say that in Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, wow, this is something you can do all the time, mm -hmm. not just in the classroom. So that actually brings up the other question I wanted to ask you. How does what you know and the experiences you have affect the future because now you have knowledge that you can't go back to the old way that you were <laughs> you can't ever go back there so now how does this affect the future for you if i had to do it all over again i would certainly put more into education i would certainly put more into learning about the family i would certainly spend more time with my family if I had to do it all over again, I'd be more responsible for my learning. The thing is, I only have now. Mm -hmm. And the message of being responsible means that I have to be doing something every day. And maybe not just once a day, maybe all day long. But I need to be doing something every day that helps me learn. Mm. I need to find out something about the family that I didn't know of before. Mm. I need to understand one point of law that I didn't understand before. Mm. There's so many things that we could do. And I used to think you'd have to have a degree to do that. But I've learned you don't. You don't. You just yeah. have to have an inquiring mind. That's right. It's like they say, inquiring minds want to know. Yes. And so. that's what it all comes down to. I just wanted to know. Mm. And now that's all it is. I want to know how that works. 
I want to know if I can make a canoe out of that tree. Mm. I want to know if I can make a kapa beater. Mm. You know, and those are the things that will compel me to try. Yes. So what does the future of Hawaii look like to you, Joanna? Mm. We got a big struggle ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have an advantage now. Which is? That we have access to knowledge. Yes, like never before. And as we become aware, um, as more people become aware, then the excitement grows and the purpose is more unified. Mm -hmm. So I can only see us attaining goals that we might have thought before would never be attainable. Mm. Maybe they were just a dream. Mm. Like what? To be sustainable. Ah. To live the Ahupua'a system. Uh -huh. To farm taro. Now, I never thought I would farm taro or I would grow. But we failed miserably our first year. We're not doing too bad the second year. But we're trying. And I think that's, that's the best thing about it is that we try. And I think at this point, that's the best that we can ask of anyone is that they try. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think anything is too far out of our reach. I don't think a free Hawaii is out of our reach. I don't think that, um, in fact, I do think that America will come to recognize. How they come to recognize us, I don't know, but I know they will. Mm -hmm. I believe that one day we will have our sovereignty. Mm. You know, that's a very powerful thing you said. I don't think anything is out of our reach. That's powerful. You know, Joanna, we have many people watch our show both in Hawaii and around the world, both on TV and on the web. And a lot of people who watch the show we know sit there and say, gee, if I could only find my peace, if I could only find my peace, I might get involved. What would you say to them that are watching us right now? You have to begin with what you know. You have to find out what it is that burns within you to, to want to know. Um, with me, it was finding out whether I was really Hawaiian or not. Mm. And that was an issue. I didn't think it would be, not at my age, but it was, it got to be an issue. And then one day um, in Waipio Valley, when I still wanted to see Hi'ilavi in the clouds that covered up that view, I thought, oh, please, just one sight of her and I'll be able to carry that the rest of my life. And the clouds just parted for just a little while. Wow. And I saw Hi'ilavi and I recognized at that moment why I would be always and forever Hawaiian. It's because that's what I am. That's all that I am is Hawaiian. No matter what I know, what I didn't know, that didn't matter because I'm Hawaiian. That's remarkable. And you know what, Joanna, you're remarkable. <laughs> you're really, you're, you're so rich with inspiration. I'm so <laughs> moved by who you are and what you've taken upon yourself to discover about yourself, about the past and the future, and the fact that you see that nothing really is impossible to you and anyone like you who takes a little time to discover some things about themselves. You know, my mother has to be my hero. At gee, 70, she was going back to college mm -hmm. because she had seen all of us in school trying to learn the language and she wanted to as well. She was receiving a Hawaiian certificate from Winwood Community College. Um, and she passed away about a month before that. Wow. But she got her certificate. And she's your inspiration. She's always been my inspiration. Wonderful. Joanna, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. We're so moved by who you are. Oh. And please don't stop. Please keep up the great work. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. And thank you for watching. This has been Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation.
I'm Ehuke Kahu Cardwell, and remember, watch us on the web 24 7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com. Also, our weekly video TV commentaries on FreeHawaiiTV.com. And of course, it's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. I'm Ehuke Kahu Cardwell. Thanks for watching, and until next time, ahui ho!